My ghost story started about 10 years ago when I saw a ghost at Pacey's Lounge in Malden, Pennsylvania. This business has been in my family for 48 years now. And I'm still afraid of my dining room. <laughs> in one corner of our restaurant, we see quite often a shadow of an old man. He'll just materialize. People feel him all the time. If he comes very, very close to me, I, I do get like a goosebump chill. It's the legend, and nobody knows where he came from. He's been there ever since my parents bought the buildings in 1962. Her building back in the 1820s was the stagecoach stop. The house I live in used to be the inn, and my restaurant is in what used to be the stables. I don't know what was back in that corner. Maybe back when it was a stable, something was there that he's drawn to right there. He's kind of slouched over with a long coat on and a hat. He seems to have a beard, and he just moseys on across the dining room, and then he disappears. My husband's caught eye of it, and he was in awe because he believes in nothing. Numerous people have seen it. I could see them staring, and then that look on their face like, oh my god, what did I just see? If you get the willies, you really do not want to go to the restroom. So many people just get a very creepy feeling back there. They'll come out and, you know, they're just like shrugging their shoulders and wanting to get out of there fast. And, and that's his back corner back there. Nobody really messes with it. We've taken pictures where within seconds would have a ton of orbs to zero. Can you come over here? Sit down with me. I talk to him. I take tape recorders. I would like to get answers from him. Would like to know what year you died. I would ask him his name, how he died, why he was there. We've had two very small phrases out of him, and it was just to leave him alone. Good. Oh. To actually hear my ghost makes it even more real that he's there. We didn't know he said anything, but when we played back the tape, we heard this voice that says, just leave it be. I just think he wants us to go away. He's very, very angry at something. When I lock up at night, I could sense him. Just get that funny feeling that he's back there. I have to walk through the dining room to get out the front door, and when I do, I feel this force like it's pushing me out the door. It's really a creepy feeling, and I'll walk as fast as I can. I'm like, I'm going, I'm going, I'll get out so you could have the place. But I feel the push until I finally shut the door, and then I run home. I feel terrified. I don't like when he does that to me. He, like, takes total control, like, this is my place now. That bar is his. He claims it. He'll let you know that after hours. What the hell? Now it moved me. As I found out. I have partition walls that could move around. And she was sitting at a table and with her head leaning up against this. I had a tape recorder going. And I was leaning on the wall with my left shoulder in the left side of my head. All of a sudden, we hear this loud bang. And, and this wall moved and hit her in the head. and. We're like, what the heck was that? It's up to everybody else. I can sleep in this chair. It doesn't matter to me. I am sorry. Did you hear that? It hit this what? wall. You did? No, it hit the wall. It moved me. It hit hard. It moved my head and shoulder off the wall. That what the wild. hell? No, it moved me. It hit this wall. I just really got slammed against that wall. I felt that. It definitely moved the wall with a lot of force, a lot of force. Nothing could have moved the wall that hard. No one else was in the room, no one. Even to hit with our hands, we couldn't make that sound, move that wall. It shocked me 
because he's never, ever, ever gotten physical before, never. And I know that's him. I'm haunted at home, too. The house that I live in was vacant for 45 years, and I decided to renovate it and move in. The more we worked in there, the more unusual activities began to happen. She definitely has some things going on there. You'll be in the house, and you would hear your name being called, but there's nobody there. My children have experienced laying on the bed and feeling as though they were being crushed down into their bed. I really thought my children's imaginations were just going crazy. But then it happened to me. I was lying in bed, wide awake, and I felt like I was being crushed down. I couldn't move my legs, my arms, my head, nothing. Oh, that made me a believer. There was something else in the house with us. One of the owners of the house had children, Kizzy and Jim. Jim had come home from hunting one day with a rifle, and it was loaded, and laid it down on the table. Kizzy didn't want it to be there because she thought it'd be dangerous, and they argued. The rifle accidentally went off, shot Kizzy, and killed her. She's one of the ghosts that roams around the house. The house is huge. There's things for her to get into, be a mischievous child. One morning, I was home all alone. So I lay down on the living room couch to take a nap. And I had this dream that something was pulling at my hair and pulling really hard. And it woke me up. And when I woke up, I reached to grab the top of my head. And I felt a small child's hand. I don't think I'll ever forget what it felt like to try to release it from my hair. It hurt so bad. In my bookcase in my living room, there was always a beautiful smell on the shelf. With Kizzy, her sign of being there a lot is the scent of flowers. I was always told that the smell of flowers is the presence of a spirit. One time, I actually did pick up a book from there. And when I put it back, the, the book smelled of the flowers, and so did my hand for a while. One night after dark, I was trying to capture anything on film. I had one camera facing the bookshelf where we smelled Kizzy. My niece was looking through the eyepiece, and she saw this orb rotate around the chair that was sitting in front of the bookshelf. Whoa, oh my gosh. There's a big thing that just went across, like in front of the chair. The shape of the orb it almost looks like a set of wings. When I first saw the film played back, I just thought, something really is in my house. One of my patrons looked into the history of the Taylor family, and she found that Kizzy was buried at the local cemetery a mile or so from my house. I go up there every now and then and pay my respects. I've been living in the house now for 16 years, and she made our presence known very strongly. I'm hoping that someday she just realizes that she needs to move on. She's going to stay there. You can't force them to go anywhere. You can ask them, and you can help them, but you can't force them. <laughs>